So how will you tell me? Mr. Ricky Anderson has arrived. And to just talk to la ladies. Well, I think the best way is just to hear from um, the veterans themselves. Okay. And I'll have reason that I can wrap it up and get your program out. Sure. Um, well, my name, like I told you before, is Stella. I'm 16 and a half years in the military. I suffered from some issues. Where they can have permanent housing 
for women because some of us, I know when I say us, there are other ladies that right now they're at work, but they don't have any resources that they can go to, they can get housing. Sure. And so if they have that opportunity, this organization, I would love to see in the near future. Maybe it would be a goal of mine with God. You never know. Yeah. But hey, right. that's something that we, this organization, I really feel like we really benefit for it. Because they have great staff here. Some girls like car over here, you know, I was just behind the wheel. There was a big guy upstairs. That's why you didn't get that up canceling. I may be in traffic, I may be late. You could have been gone. I've just been parked out there in the morning with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I am for living up to my calendar. So no, definitely I appreciate uh, that insight. And I know you guys bring infrastructure because um, it they fail if you know, you know, and you guys have been here and you know, you're helping me up the It's not just for you. You know, I, I grew up in a military family, but you know, my dad, uh, my wife's dad, and everybody in my family went to the military except me, you know. And so I'm just a firm believer in uh, that that's what I was surrounded with. And, you know, they had cast me out. They you know, I work hard. And them teach me a lot, too. And, um, and, and so I, I'm certainly, you know, not only a sounding board, but I'm a worker. You know, you put me on the ground, you know, I'm not afraid to get my answer. Yeah. And more, more to, to Stephanie's point is that if we don't provide the housing, or if we, we, and we stay full. Yes. There are very few options for women veterans right. in the community, sure. especially women veterans with children. Right. Um, women veterans are at a disadvantage. Um, most shelters are male dominated. Sure. And if you have had some um, sexual trauma in the military, it's not a therapeutic environment. Sure. It's not where you feel safe. Um, and a lot of shelters don't take children of a certain age or a certain yes. quantity of children. Sure. Sure. So, and we're the only um, emergency shelter that provides all the wraparound services that we provide for women veterans. So, there's a community that's created and when you bring these ladies together, like she mentioned. Sure. Um, but there's also a lot of power in numbers. So what, when you say how could you help her, what we need one is we need, we need to raise awareness. Yes. We need the overall community to know the plight and the struggle of female veterans. They know veterans, they know PTSD, that's out there, but they don't see, they don't have a female face to it. Yes. It's the fact that women who have the custody of their kids have to stay in their car longer sure. than a single male because what are they going to do? We've had women who, they, they have a 13-year-old son. The son may have to go on the male side of the shelter. And they have to separate the family. So she's out there, you know, she has to make a choice. If she's got three or more kids, she's going to stay in her car than to give up her kids. So that shouldn't be a choice. You sure. have to make sure. housing over, you know, being a mom. No, that's, that's, you know, that's a tough decision. Uh, and I would say probably... 100% well, of the mothers are going to save the children. You know, I'm the youngest of four, and I've got three sisters. And, uh, you know, they say that uh, I'm spoiled by the ladies, but I need to appreciate them. And, uh, and they knew how to, you know, I made me behave myself. So I, I applauded it. I grew up in a single parent family home. You know, my mom and dad just divorced when I was young. They got one with just abusive. But I still applaud her, you know, for, you know, raising, you know, four children, you know, three sisters and I. So, you know, you, you, you're, you're, I certainly can. You know, to what the circumstances are. That's probably why I was attracted, you know, immediately to yesterday because believe me, Super Bowl week Houston, my schedule the day before, I know that there's just too many moving parts, you know, in my life, but I wanted to get here. I wanted to, you know, at least find out what I could about it. Because I don't know what I can do. I don't know enough about it, but I'm learning as you communicate with me, you know, where some of the space for improvement really lies. And then with the circumstances. I, I would not have even said that in my mind, just simply about that. Yeah, and that's what, like I said, we've got to make people aware of that can make a difference. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of big organizations that I'm not sure you're associated with. It might be United Way, I don't know what yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're they're pretty robust. I mean, I know they they do a lot. And if you're already in that space, I don't know if you're able to submit for increases or if you have to be able to numbers first because they've got different programs. Well, the United Way gives us money for the VIA. They also give us a special grant for our employment. Okay. okay. We have a 12 week um, soft skills training okay. um, employment. So, you know, making the transition from military to corporate America, you know, sometimes it, it, 
it's a it's a finesse for working at in corporate. So we do a lot of um, you know soft skills training, and they have a career coach. We have a career coach on staff, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and and you're never really.